Does your depressed partner make you feel depressed also? I'm Rachel Sloan. You're watching The Journey to Emotional Freedom, and that is exactly what we're going to talk about today because I hear this from a lot of women, and I have a solution for you. The key, the secret, is to purposefully, intentionally choose, create, and practice your own worldview. And I am going to explain to you today exactly how to go about doing that. But first, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check the little box to send you notifications because I am doing 30 videos in 30 days to launch my channel. And if you find this material useful, you are not gonna wanna miss a single video. So let's get really clear on what's going on when your partner's depressed and it makes you start feeling depressed too. And to explain why this happens, I wanna tell you a little bit about my story. So my husband has suffered from depression for quite a few years. And in the beginning, I really struggled to be supportive and a good listener because I was often obsessed with trying to fix him or help or find a solution. Once I learned to let go of that, I became a much better listener and he started to open up to me. The problem that arose then was he started telling me about the way he was seeing the world. He started sharing his thoughts and his feelings and his experience. And when someone is depressed, the way they are seeing the world is not very pretty. It's dark, it's overwhelming, it's hopeless, it feels like there's no purpose or no point. They don't see the good, they don't see the bright, they don't see the light. So when you, you might find, as you learn to become a good listener and be supportive of your partner, that they do start talking to you and they start sharing all of these things that they're experiencing, all of these things that they're thinking. And at first you might do all right with that, but over time, as you're constantly exposed to this perspective of the world, to this image of the world as a hostile place, as a hopeless place, as a pointless place, it can start, you can start to internalize some of their thoughts, some of their beliefs. And this especially happens because the human brain is excellent at finding evidence to support what it's thinking. And so your partner, when they're sharing their experience of their depression with you, is going to have so much evidence. They're gonna have so much proof that life is hopeless, that there is no purpose, that people are not good. Whatever way depression shows up for them, they are going to have a lot of evidence to support the thoughts and beliefs that come along with it. And I wanna remind you, if you've watched some of my other videos, I've talked about how throughout our whole lives, different thoughts have been put in our minds kind of without us really being aware of it. We've been taught how to think by our parents, by our teachers, by the media, by social media. You know, all of these thoughts come into our brains and some of them get internalized and later our brain spits those thoughts back out at us as though they were our own thoughts. And if we haven't learned how to examine our mind and choose our thoughts on purpose, it's really easy when those thoughts pop up to think that they're ours, to think we own them and that we have to believe them. And this is exactly what happens when your depressed partner starts opening up to you. You keep hearing these stories, you keep hearing their worldview, their perspective, you keep hearing all of their evidence for how that is obviously true, and you internalize some of that. And then you'll find your brain spitting back out at you, oh, I guess this is just hopeless. Maybe there is no point. But now these thoughts aren't coming from your partner. They're coming in your own mind, in your own voice, in your own head. And so you think, oh gosh, that's my thought. I believe that. That's how I think about the world now. And you find yourself becoming depressed, feeling down, right? So what I'm gonna teach you today is how to choose the way you think on a broad sense, your worldview on purpose, how to create it and practice it so that you can be with your partner, you can listen, you can be compassionate and supportive without internalizing their thoughts and feelings and beliefs. I wanna be really careful here in what I'm saying and how you're hearing me because I am not talking about asking your partner to change their worldview. If they are opening up to you, if they are sharing honestly and openly their experience of depression, that is a powerful thing for your partner. And if you can sit with them and you can listen and hear that, that is so, it really is one of the most beautiful ways you can support them is giving them the space to share that with you. So I am not talking about trying to change the way they are thinking or their beliefs. We are only talking about what's happening in your own 
mind and how to protect yourself from internalizing the beliefs that they are sharing with you. So we're talking about your work, not theirs. And I also want to congratulate you because if your partner is opening up to you this way, you are doing a really good job of being an active listener and being compassionate and not judging or trying to fix them. And that is so hard to do. And if you are succeeding there, you are already above and beyond. You should be really, really proud of yourself. Okay, so how do you look after your own mental health? How do you protect your own worldview so you don't get depressed as well? So I have six clear things that you can do starting now to help protect yourself from feeling depressed when you're being supportive and a good listener to your partner. The first is to remind yourself that all thoughts are optional. If you struggle with this, most of us do to some extent because when we're in a thought, when we're in a belief, we are believing it and it feels absolutely true. So the way to remind yourself is to literally take a step back in your brain. Take a step out of whatever situation you're in where you're believing a thought. See yourself standing in front of you in the distance and ask yourself, could any other person think something different in this situation? What I find really helpful with my husband when he's depressed is to remind myself how different his worldview is when he's not depressed. That is evidence to me that those thoughts are choices, that it's not the absolute truth what he's saying. It might be very true for him in that moment, but it is not the only truth and it is not the only possibility. His thoughts are optional, your thoughts are optional. Again, I am not saying that you should share this with him or tell him to change his thoughts. That is not going to be helpful. The supportive listening role is what he needs. He does not need you telling him to change his thoughts. This work is about you and your thoughts. So step one, remind yourself that thoughts are optional. Step number two is to choose on purpose how you want to think and feel about the world as a whole. And now don't overcomplicate this. I know it sounds like I'm asking you to decide like how you want to think about everything. I'm not talking about that. Just make a simple statement. You might choose something like, I believe people are generally good, or I want to believe that life is beautiful. Or you could bring in a religious or spiritual belief here, or something that gives you a sense of purpose. How do you want to think and feel in a broad sense? What do you want your worldview to be like, summed up in one or two thoughts? Don't overcomplicate it. You can't do this wrong. Just pick one thing to go with. How do you want to think about other people? How do you want to think about life in general? How do you want to think about the purpose of life? Wherever you can find a thought that you really like, pick that, go with it. That's step two. Step three is write that thought down. Write down how you want to think and feel on this broad sense, this big world picture. Step four is to go out and find evidence to support that thought. If you chose to think people are generally good, as you go through your day, ask your brain, what evidence can I find that people are generally good? Can I see this? Can I kind of prove this to myself in my day-to-day -day life? Life is beautiful. What examples are there that life is beautiful? Where can I look for evidence? I would highly recommend that you also write your evidence down under that thought, but you can also just make this a part of a daily practice. Be looking for evidence to support that thought. Step five is to set an intention. And this is as simple as saying it out loud to yourself or in your brain. I intend to hold this thought, to hold this worldview, for myself when I'm speaking with my depressed partner. And be careful here. This is not that you're going to try to argue with your partner. It's not that you are going to bring up this evidence and show them that life is beautiful. That is not what this is about. You are not going to share any of this with them. It's not what it's about. This is just setting the intention to hold within yourself your knowledge that you have this thought. Life is beautiful. You believe it, it's there. When you go in to a conversation with your partner, you're gonna have this inner knowing that you have this thought that you fully believe. Life is beautiful, I know this. Last step, step six. 
when you start, when you find yourself entering into that conversation with your partner where they are sharing their experience of depression, I want you to remind yourself of this inner knowing, of this certainty about how you have chosen on purpose to see the world. I want you to remind yourself that every day you are finding evidence to support your worldview and that it's okay that your partner doesn't share your worldview, that you can hold space for them show up with compassion and listen with curiosity to what their experience is without giving up your inner knowing of what's true for you, what's true in your worldview. Doing these six steps is not just for you. This is also for your partner because what you are going to do is create on purpose a worldview that you want. You're going to internalize that and hold it within you when you enter into a conversation with your partner. And that's going to allow you to listen to them, hear their experience without internalizing it. Because when you internalize their pain and their painful way of seeing the world, it changes. It's not theirs anymore. If you internalize it, you start to believe it. You put your own spin on it. Your brain puts your own spin on it. And now you're filtering everything they're sharing through your experience of their pain. And it's no longer an honest uh, description that you're hearing. You are not truly hearing everything that they're experiencing, you're feeling it. And that feels different to you than it does to them. So when you do this, when you create your own worldview and hold space within yourself where you know deep within you that this is how it is, this is how you see the world, regardless of what else comes at you. Now you can listen. Now you can truly be a compassionate, open listener, and you can be curious about their experience because it's not dangerous to you. You don't have to be afraid of internalizing what they think or what they believe. If you try this practice, please share your experience with me in the comments. I would love to hear how it goes for you. This practice of holding your own belief internally while holding space for and being open for your partner. It really, for me, has been so transformative and it's allowed me to ask questions and get deeper and be so much more curious about my husband's experience of depression because I'm no longer afraid of it. It's, it can't get inside me. It can't make me feel a certain way because I have chosen ahead of time how I'm going to feel and how I want to think and feel regardless of what he shares. And it's allowed me to get such a deeper understanding of where he is and what he's going through. And it has made it so much easier for me to be truly loving and compassionate towards him. I hope that is your experience as well. And either way, please share with me. I would love to hear how this goes for you. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.